Why is selling on Amazon overwhelming? My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guide. In this video, I'm going to give you some specific reasons why selling on Amazon is a lot more overwhelming than you might think. First, I was sitting at my son's birthday party today, and next to me was a budding new Amazon seller. And she's like, man, as a customer, it's so awesome to buy things on Amazon. Amazon Prime, it gets to me so quick, it's seamless. And then I tried to sell on Amazon.com, and holy crap, it is not the same experience as, as it was for me as a buyer, as a seller. First, I had to go find a product, right? And, and I had to source the product, and I was looking on Alibaba, and I was talking to Chinese manufacturers, and someone returned my phone calls, and then I finally picked the product, and they sent me samples, and then when they sent me the samples, the samples sucked, and I was like, man, I can't even find the product. And let's say you do find the product, let's say then you start to ship it into Amazon, but then you decide to ship something like, I don't know, a, a glass bottle, and you pay Amazon to do the prep work because you don't have a warehouse, right? So you're, you're trying to get to this Amazon FBA thing and get passive income, so you send these glass bottles into Amazon, and they and you pay them to do the prep work, and they, they put the bubble wrap around it, they slap the FNCU sticker on it, and then what do they do after that? They freaking ship it out on padded envelopes. And you're scratching yourself, and you're like, what the frick, I've got hot sauce everywhere. And all of my customers are pissed off. That's a true story, by the way. And it's just an amazing chain of events. And that doesn't even account for the fact you have to go get a trademark. You gotta file for brand registry. You gotta not get banned from brand registry. That also happened to me. You then have to figure out how to list and load the product, make sure the product doesn't get listed yanked. Uh, that's an actual official term. That's when you see the lost dogs on Amazon. And then you have to advertise the product. Holy crap, advertising is an entire rabbit hole. Like you could spend a thousand hours just trying to master Amazon advertising, let alone trying to figure out how to get a proper A cost in your category or how to do weekly negations or how to actually set up campaign target segmentation alone, right? Like, uh, you know, should I use PBC automation software? Should I do this manually? Should I use bulk sheets? What bulk sheets? I have to freaking use Excel sheets to sell on Amazon. Like, what is this? All, all this stuff. And that doesn't even account for SEO. And in SEOs, you have to go in and, and research keywords and put things in like alt text behind the scenes on Amazon and try and figure out how to build this thing called A plus content. And then all of the designs that you have to put together. And what's this thing called a human avatar? You have to actually put shots of your products with people on Amazon and, and using your product and lifestyles. And um, how do I get this thing to even sell? I don't even know. Like uh, it's, it's such a complicated process. What's this thing called CTR? Click through rate? Oh my gosh, I have to get people to actually click on my product. There's thousands of competing products. We all look alike. We're all private labeling because some Amazon guru said sell on Amazon. It's the best thing ever, but it's really not. It's not passive income. It, it's amazing when it works, but it doesn't work every time. It's like 30% of the time it works 100% of the time times like another 5%, right? And, and it's just a really complicated process where you have to get your Amazon SEO, your PPC, your CTR, your conversion, and then all of a sudden, Amazon's like, oh, by the way, there's this new thing called Amazon FBA, um, low inventory fees. And also there's these placement fees. And all of a sudden it's like you're selling on Ticketmaster and you had no idea what this heck is going on. You, you, you don't even have a warehouse. You don't know how to ship things. You, you barely are brown boxing this thing. Maybe you actually got some, some branded packaging like this and, you, and you're starting to figure yourself out. And then all of a sudden a customer leaves a one-star review. But you look at the customer review and it's not really a real customer. It's actually the Chinese and they started attacking you with 20 one star reviews uh, and, and you don't really know what's going on at all. Oh, you finally made a profit. You made a quarter million dollars on Amazon. Well, great. Now Amazon bans your advertising because you used the word drink on a wine glass and you can't advertise it anymore. Even though you had the number one best-selling wine glass on Amazon, you were an SEO slot number one for the term wine glass. But right on Valentine's Day, Amazon said, nope, I'm going to ban this from advertising just because it says the word drink. And I don't want to promote alcoholism on Amazon because, you know, you, you don't even drink alcohol yourself, but you sell these wine glasses and, you know, whatever. And it says Mama Shark needs to drink. Drink, do, 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 do. I don't know. And things are finally going well. So you say, okay, I'm going to expand some additional variations. But the problem with that is you expanded to too many variations. You ended up stealing sales from your best seller. And then your secondary sellers, you're overstocked. You have too many of them. You can't make money on them, but you have to sell them. So you start discounting them. But then all of a sudden, your, your best seller is no longer your best seller. And so you have to reorder the wrong products and you're overstocked. And, and, and you just don't know what to do because you bought a thousand monkey farts and dirty socks thinking, oh, this is going to be super funny. Everybody's going to love this product. It's going to be hilarious. Let's just have pimple popper as a, as a soap and then all of a sudden nobody buys that So you end up giving them away to all of your clients and to customers and they get these things in the mail and They're like, what were you thinking? And you're like, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm an Amazon seller 
And then you went on LinkedIn and saw somebody else is getting a 26% ACoS and you have no idea because your ACoS is 45% and you're like, how are you getting 26% ACoS? And it triggers you and you're just like, holy crap, how do you afford to even advertise your product on Amazon? And then some guy was like, well, if you're doing so well on Amazon, why don't you go sell on Walmart as well? Because Walmart's a great idea. You know, they bought Jet like six years ago and they were supposed to overtake Amazon and they have all these facilities and buildings all over the world, but they don't know how to integrate the internet with their e-commerce platform. And they're not really a marketplace because you've never heard of a native born Amazon brand or excuse me, a native born Walmart brand, but because uh, they put their retail uh, brands on the top of search above your product. So when you launched on Walmart and you spent a couple thousand dollars on ads on Walmart, nothing actually happened. You didn't sell anything, even though you put 10 times as much work into trying to sell on Walmart as you put on Amazon and only got 120th the result. So then you thought, okay, well, if it did well on Walmart, maybe I'll go do TikTok next, right? And that was an idiot. And then you're like, oh, maybe I'll just go launch on TikTok and find some influencers to push my product. So you launch on TikTok and you hire all these influencers and it takes ages and hours and hours of time to get them to take your soap and, 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 and to take videos and pictures and pushing your product. But then TikTok shop bans your product as well as your, your shop because they're Chinese and they don't really want you to succeed anyway. So you go back to focusing just on Amazon, but then the Amazon fees go up again and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I should diversify, but last time I did, it didn't work out very well. What do I do? So then you hire an agency and the agency is like, we got this, we're going to take care of you. And then you pay them lots of money and then they don't grow your account. So you fire the agency and you're like, ah, oh, go back to do everything in house again. And then you repeat all the same mistakes all over again because you forgot everything in the last five years. And then you have to redo it all again because that's what it's like to be an Amazon seller. It is not passive income. It is nonstop trying to run a business in all of these different ways. You have to understand logistics and SEO and marketing and PPC and, and sourcing. And, and then you made a trip to China, but you really hated China and you didn't really want to do with anything with the culture or the bribery. And, and, and you saw all these new products that are coming out. And you're like, but how do I have an edge and how do I do something unique? But you see lots of gurus on LinkedIn um, talking about their cool products. And you're like, oh, but that's lots of fun. And I really want to do it. But what do I do? And you sit on all of these things. And then you get a closet full of product um, ideas that you just are sitting on from like hundreds of, of different products you've bought on Amazon, but they just sit in the closet because you don't really know what to do with them. So if any of this resonated with you, slam that like button. And it's like, that's what it's like to be an Amazon seller, isn't it?